Christian Broadcast Ministries presents CBM Worship. We invite you to worship with us as we praise and worship our Lord together through music, prayer, and God's Word. We bring you CBM Worship from the Sanctuary of the Wayside Temple, 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, Ohio. We pray you'll be blessed and encouraged as we worship our Lord together.
It says, my heart will choose to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you lift your praise to him? Just let him know that you appreciate him. Lord, we just worship you today. And Father, we bring our sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. Lord, blessed be your name. You have poured out many blessings. And even through our trials, Lord, we have experienced your faithfulness. Lord, my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Lord, we rejoice that, Father, you have saved us by your grace. And, Lord, we've been adopted into your family. And, Lord, we can just draw close to you, crying, Abba, Father, you're our Father today. And, Lord, we're your sons and daughters by faith in the Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the victory we have through the Lord Jesus today. Lord, we can never bless you enough. We can never praise you enough. One day, Lord, in your presence, we will give you a perfect praise. And Lord, we will enjoy your presence throughout the eternal ages to come. Lord, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. How wonderful today to know that we're saved. Now, Father, I pray you'll minister to our hearts in this hour. Lord, I pray you'll minister to those that have tuned in wherever this broadcast might find them today. I pray you'll lift their spirit, encourage their heart. And I pray each soul will find their hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps there's many watching or listening, maybe some that are gathered here today that do not know that personal relationship with your son. They don't know the joy and peace of forgiveness and Lord, the assurance that heaven is their home. Lord, I pray your spirit will work in their heart in a mighty way today. Bring them to that place of personal repentance where the heart turns to the Savior and finds victory and forgiveness and cleansing. Praise your name. Lord, I know you're with us today. And I know as we ask for your blessings, you hear us. And Lord, I know that you will work amongst us today and will not fail to give you all the praise and glory. You're so worthy. Lord, we just want to tell you again that we love you today. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing. 
Lord, just this past week, you have been so good. And we thank you and praise you. Now have your way in this service and in all that we say and do today. Help us exalt and magnify that mighty name of Jesus. It's in his name we ask and pray. Amen. And amen. If you're happy in the Lord, just give him another hand clap of praise. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Since we're foregoing shaking hands these days, maybe we'll just get in the habit of giving the Lord an extra hand clap, Brother Jack. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Wow, we are so pleased to see each one of you. And I know as um, the nation continues to work its way through this COVID situation that we're trying to be wise and we're trying to be um, uh, diligent uh, as we interact. And I think we're doing a pretty good job. But I would just like to remind you that uh, even today, as you dismiss, you know, outside it's beautiful today. And you can enjoy some fellowship out there where you have more elbow room, right? So we won't linger in the lobby. And today we have a special treat. I'm sure you noticed on your way in, as we mentioned last week, uh, some time ago, Sister Marie had asked the church, can, can we just, we, you know, everything's upside down this year. And, and do you think it'd be all right if we just had a, organized a, a little fellowship after church? And she mentioned this date. And we said, well, yeah, we could give it a whirl. So it's happened. And you see the uh, arrangements that they've made. They'll have folks coming, you know, family. And of course, we're all family here. Praise the Lord. We've watched James grow up here. And uh, we, we love him. We love all of our young people. Of course, we just love our people. That's the way it goes. But it's exciting to watch uh, young men and young ladies come to faith in Christ and build their life on the Lord Jesus. You can encourage James today and encourage all of our graduates along the way as you're able. But today, uh, if you don't have a comfort level, you know, just staying around and keeping distance appropriately, you can still uh, pick up your packed lunch. They have it for you. You can't stay. You're invited to take uh, the packed lunch with, with you. And there might be other reasons. You might uh, not, you not be too worried about the uh, keeping distance, but you just can't stay because of schedules. You can stop by and just make your way through, pick it up. Look, they, they, they're, they're going to bless you today. And of course, along the way, as we're able, we'll bless our graduates. And uh, I, I intend to uh, enjoy some of the uh, fellowship today, although I, I, I am. Now, you folks might not think this of me. But uh, I'm doing my dead level best to keep my distance from people like Harold White. And... Well, Brother White's always front and center. He's right there where I can't miss him. But seriously, though, we are trying to uh, respect, uh, you know, the realities and, and uh, uh, forego a few of our, uh, you know, accustomed expressions. You know, I, it doesn't bother me to hug people. And we've done that for years. And uh, but we'll, we'll try not to do that today and that kind of thing. So, uh, but um, I, enjoy, I intend to mix it up a little bit. So I'll, I'll do my best to stay about six foot away or whatever that looks like. Uh, you know, you have to hang out just a little while to really have an opportunity maybe to, to pass something along to somebody. But uh, we respect every, everything that everybody's doing, trying to encourage everybody. But now along the way, as we've been preaching constantly, uh, we're not going to be overtaken with unnecessary fear. And so we want to be encouragers, want to be wise. You enjoy the fellowship and just ming mingle as is appropriate. And uh, I think you'll enjoy the day. Um, Brother Harold's real blessing to honor James today. And uh, of course, your grandson and and. Uh, so we're going to enjoy to the best of our ability, right? Amen. That's right. And uh, so enough said about that. Make yourself feel welcome. Well, um, <clears throat> as we've been doing during this uh, season of change, at least our, our normal routines are changed a bit. We haven't been worshiping in our, in our offering by passing the offering plate. And so we're going to continue that, at least for the foreseeable future. But I like to call special attention to it. God's people worship in giving. When we give to the Lord, we're not participating in some fundraiser, some, some generic fundraiser, because we've got to keep the lights on. 
No, we're bringing our offering because we actually worship the living God with our first fruits. And we have much motivation from the word of God to honor the Lord. Proverbs 3, honor the Lord with your first fruits, you know, all your substance. And there's a promise of blessing, of sufficiency, of more than enough in those verses. So we believe in experiencing God's faithfulness. So we worship the Lord in our giving. And we try to uh, address that appropriately. And so um, over time, I'm sure we'll worship uh, in that way again. But on the way out today, as you would desire, as you've grown in this grace, worship the Lord in your tithe and offering. And those of you that are watching today, uh, perhaps uh, you are members of other churches. And we're so glad that you can tune in today and we can be an encourager to you. But your pastor needs your help. And perhaps some of you haven't been able to attend for some time. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit will guide you. And perhaps he's already nudged your heart. But maybe we need to remind you today. Do your best to stay active in the cause of Christ. And uh, take care of God's house. You know, folks, if you take care of God's house, he'll take care of yours. Amen. And I believe that. So just a word of encouragement. Uh, in, in, you know, stand by your dear pastors and Everybody's circumstances are a bit different. And so, but you can pray and you can still be connected, be involved. And of course, as the greater body of Christ, we can encourage one another. We're glad that you're tuned in today. All right. I believe we have some special music. And uh, then we will be in Mark chapter 2. You can uh, open your Bible there if you'd like. And we'll take a few minutes today to share the word of the living God. All right. Let's worship as our team shares some special music. Thank you. Let us 
sing just a little more more of that you know we have some problems that are just kind of developing and you know I'm not look we all know about the COVID problems we all know a lot about the whole problem I'm not talking about I'm talking about right now in the church because in in light of all this COVID a lot of the cause of Christ is being interrupted like no witnessing like no personal work, like no going after our kids. We've got a hindrance in progress here in some ways. And then when we come to church, we're just trying to make sure what? That we don't all get sick? And then we have an hour, and I'm thankful for that, but we have to make sure we dot our I's, cross our T's, and then move on with life, right? So we just get in a little form, and then you come in, and maybe you just sketch your mind on everything else but the Lord, and you leave with no blessing. You leave with no worship that flows from the heart. You, you, we just get into, no, I've learned enough over the years. Brother Shelby taught me this a long time ago. We won't just have a form that we go through. We will have things done decently and in order, but we are here to worship the Lord. And I just kind of felt while we were singing, I thought, Lord, things don't quite feel right. We're all seated. We're just singing. Uh-oh, I think we might be getting into that, just go through the motions. I don't think I'm quite ready to preach to this crowd yet. I think we need to sing a bit more. And I think you need to welcome, <laughs> welcome, the comforter is here. God, the Holy Spirit abides in us, but his sweet ministry to us as believers is so, it, it, it's broad. There, there's much that our comforter is present to do here today. Do you, believe, you know the spirit of the living God, do you not? Amen. Now, today, I'd lay hands on you if you desired it. We'll do it at the end of service. But don't you quench the spirit of God because of the season we're in? How about we stand and we just worship the Lord a little bit, a little bit more and, and our team can lead us in some more of this chorus. And now you, you worship a little bit and, and you can pray a little bit. And you know, what is it that's on your heart today? What is it that you need to receive from the Lord? Why don't you talk to him a little bit? Why don't you worship him freely as we sing? And those of you at home, what is it that you need? Maybe some of you are just really bound up in fear today. And, and you just look at everything that's going on and, and you think, how in the world are we going to make it through this world? There's a God on the throne today. And he's our comforter. And he's, our, he's with, her, with us. And he's our protector. He's our provider. And whatever you need today, reach out to the Spirit of God and let Him give it to you. Amen. 
say this, you ought to receive the joy of the Lord right now. You ought to receive the peace of God that passes all understanding right now. I mean just a fresh batch of it. And whatever burden you're carrying, the Holy Spirit lifts that now in the name of Jesus. Oh no, we don't have to carry that burden. No, no. Some of you bound up in fear? No, not, not anymore. The Spirit of God sets you free from that fear. 
You can be seated if you want to. You know, I was thinking about some of the words of that song, and I was thinking about examples in the Bible. You remember when Solomon dedicated the temple? You remember what happened? When God's presence came down and filled that temple, and they saw the Shekinah glory of God. Amen. Wow. Yes, Lord. You know, the Lord fills his church with his glory. And the work of the Spirit in our heart and life is real. We wouldn't be here today except the Spirit of God convicted us, brought us to a place of repentance, changed our heart. And he, we have, have we not learned through the years that he is our comforter? He's our helper. He's our teacher. When the Lord said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, he said, me and my father, we're going to come make our abode, our abide with you. And we're not leaving. He did that in the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, he walks with us. <laughs> Brother Darrell, he talks with us. And like the old hymn says, he tells us <laughs> that we are his own. Amen. Hey, I can't, I can't exactly explain things in words. You know, we try to. But how can I explain to you exactly how the Lord walks with us and talks with us and tells us that we are his own? Have you not experienced this in some measure? Brother Bill, have you not experienced this? Well, if you know something about what I'm talking about, say amen. amen. I just got to tell you today that, you know, there's a lot of mess in our world today. Amen. But it ain't messing with me. I don't know what to tell you. Somebody says, well, you don't know what might happen tomorrow. I sure don't, but I know my God's on the throne. Amen. Worst thing that could happen to me is I'll graduate to heaven and be there tomorrow. Amen. I mean, if that's the worst, I say, even so, come Lord Jesus. Oh, excuse me, you, you, you wanting to stay here? Brad, you wanting to stay here? I mean, I'm contented here, but my heart's already there. No, 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 no. This world's messed up, but I'm not messed up. The world's in a mess, but I'm not in a mess. There seems to be an awful side of fear in our world, but I haven't felt that one iota. I slept real good last night. I'm not kidding. Slept real good. And, uh, you know, the world, all they can do is preach to you that the virus is spreading like wildfire. Well, I don't know. I guess it is spreading, and I know there's uh, people that, do get sick and we pray for them and you know if i get sick tomorrow uh, i put that in the lord's hands i wouldn't blame it on anything else I, there's nothing to blame i'm not worried about it uh look i could leave here today for a whole whole host of reasons not even connected to covid 19 but like i preach continually i'm packed up and ready to go Amen. i'm not living my life in fear I'm not afraid to go to Wally World. Do people still call it that? I don't know. I heard somebody call it that. I don't know. But uh, when I go, I just keep my distance. And if they want me to, I throw a mask on. I, I hate, you know, I respect that. I do. And some of you are doing that precautiously today, and we respect that. And and uh, we honor that. And there's lots of reasons. And if, I, if I'm in close proximity with some, I've got a mask or two available. And I have wore them and I will. I'm not uh, opposed to that. This is ridiculous. I'm so fed up, aren't you, with everything becoming a political football that gets kicked around the culture. Amen. Knock it off, would you? We got the practical side of this thing and we're going to be respectful. And, and if you need me to wear, I'll wear one and we'll deal with it. Josh, you wear one at work, do you not? That's right. So we've got it, and we're respectful, and there's reason. So, but you know what? The world, they, they just preach so much fear. And, and you know, um, there's going to be some problems in this old world. We know it. But the Lord will help us, uh, and he will continue to guide us through these choppy waters. Do you believe that? Uh, you know, we can walk on the water with King Jesus a little bit. Just keep your eyes fastened on him. Dear Lord, don't put them on the politicians or you're going to sink like a rock. You better keep your eyes on King Jesus today. Amen. Amen. And we're going to let our comforter be our strength. We're going to let him 
guide us. Brother Kevin, we're going to trust him to help us. I mean to tell you, we're going to trust him for his protection. And uh, we'll be full of common sense and wisdom. But at the end of the day, every one of us, our trust is in not just what we can do, but in him. Isn't it good to have your confidence in the Lord today? Now, I'm starting to feel better. I'm starting to feel like I might could preach for a few minutes. I'm talking away my time. You understand? We're on the clock. I mean, this ain't no good. We're going to shoot that clock one of these days. You know, I've been in churches where they have clocks on the back of the wall. And now I got one that's the size of that monitor back there. And we ain't never had no clock in here. I'm going to shoot that thing. I'm just kidding. I, I wouldn't really do that. I mean, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm talking figuratively. And I think, my goodness. Now, you folks at home, if we get busy preaching today and our director has to fade us off, Tune in next week by way of tape on Sunday night and you can get the, you can get part two. OK, because we might not get done today. But isn't it good to be with God's people? Start feeling free in the Lord. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned about our world today. I, I know you are, but I'm concerned for different reasons. I'm concerned about a world that's lost. I'm concerned about a world that. In spite of all the trouble that's going on, you don't hear too many conversations about the Lord. I am thankful for those who do confess the Lord, and I hear it from time to time, and I appreciate it. Sometimes I'll be watching a little interview, and I'll see somebody mention the Lord. And uh, sometimes if they're interviewing a pastor uh, that's godly and knows the Lord, he'll talk a lot about the Lord. This is what our nation needs to hear. And uh, we have a need to turn back to the Lord. We need to come to a place of repentance. It's very urgent. And I fear that while we're so busy with all the cares of this life, that all the clamor and noise will keep many people from hearing the message they really need to hear, which is the message of hope, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need to be able to hear the Spirit of God today calling us to a place of repentance. Look, my friend. You, you're, you're, you're shook and you're, you're, you're troubled about the future. What, what if COVID passes and things get back to normal? Is everything okay then? But you see, one day you're going to die after all, aren't you? This season might pass and the sun might shine a little brighter for some of you uh, by and by. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a storm coming one day that you're not going to be able to escape. When that old Jordan casts its cold waters at your feet, like we say, you're going to have to cross that river. And when you leave here and you step into eternity, what are you going to do if you don't know Jesus? Amen. Friend, you're, 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 in, you're in. Look, there's a great need today to hear the voice of the Lord. And somehow we're going to have to tune out all the clamor, all the noise, all the distractions. And we're going to have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God says. Did you know Jesus, when he came into this world, he came preaching repentance. Let's look at our text today. We're in Mark chapter 2. And I want you to look down with me at verse um, uh, 15. We'll start there. I'll read this and pray and I'll share a few thoughts with you and... and, um, I pray you'll listen very intently. Listen and let God's spirit speak to your heart today. Mark chapter two, verse 15. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, he's he's visiting with a man named Levi. Uh, Many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. So get a picture of the crowd here. Uh, Jesus is called Levi. I think that's also Matthew, known as Matthew. And he, he, is, uh, he was a publican. He was a tax collector. But anyway, uh, Jesus in his house and many publicans. Now, that doesn't say Republicans. Okay, that's publicans. Those are tax collectors. That, that, that's Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> tax collectors. We, we, we know all about that. Now, look at this. Jesus has got many and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. So the crowd Jesus is interacting with, they are the outcasts of that society. They were looked down upon for different reasons. Quite frankly, some of them were uh, reputable. Well, not reputable, but they were well-known thieves. And others were immoral. Uh, These were the sick. 
And Jesus had come to minister to them, for, for there were many, and they followed him. Verse 16, now look at this crowd. And when the scribes, is that the news media? Excuse me. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, how is it that he eats and drinks with publicans and sinners? There's your headline. Jesus of Nazareth hanging out with the harlots. How is it that he eats and drinks with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are, that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you for your, your precious word. And now, Lord, in these next few minutes, speak this message to our hearts. Lord Jesus, you came to preach repentance, to call sinners to repentance. And Lord, we all have the same need today, every one of us, regardless of our um, position in life, our status, regardless of our wealth or our poverty, regardless of our ethnicity. Lord, you came to call sinners to repentance, and we all need to find that place where we turn our heart to you. Speak to us today, young and old. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, again, I want you to take careful note that Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. Jesus immediately preached repentance upon launching his public ministry following the temptation in the wilderness. Luke says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, Luke chapter 4. He began in his hometown of Nazareth and proceeded to dwell in Capernaum of Galilee. Matthew indicates, quote, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus proceeded to preach and teach repentance during his entire public ministry. For example, in Luke chapter 13, we read, there were present at that season some that told him, told Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. In other words, they had died at the hands of Pilate. And Jesus answering said unto them, suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Again, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus said, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas or Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. We see in this statement, the Lord's expectation, men repent at the preaching of the word of God. In this case, Jesus, a greater one than the Old Testament prophet Jonah, most certainly, he was preaching. And he says, if the men of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah, uh, how much more should men repent at the preaching of the son of the living God? My friends, the Lord has the same expectation today. The world has the great light of the gospel. And when that message comes to the heart, the Lord commands men to repent. Stay with me right there for a moment. As we preach the gospel, wherever this message finds you today, I don't care if you're a Muslim. I don't care if you're a Hindu. I don't care if you're a professed atheist. I don't care what your religious background is. When you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and you experience the witness of the Spirit of God, God Almighty in heaven, he He's not offering you a suggestion. He is commanding you to repent, to turn your heart from sin and turn your heart to the Savior. Amen. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a message that's not coming from Pastor Rusty or from other, any other uh, human element in the church today. The message of the church of Jesus Christ is coming straight from the throne of Almighty God and He's commanding you to repent and believe upon His dear Son. Jesus Christ preached repentance. Was there ever a man who loved sinners more than Jesus? Why, no. Christ loved sinners. He came to a lost world to seek and to save that which was lost. 
He has a passion for a lost world. Jesus Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. His heart is still full of compassion for a lost world. Amen. Jesus Christ came to sinners because they were sick. They were in need of a, of a physician. That is, spiritually speaking, they needed to hear the good news of the gospel. But so did the self-righteous, and Jesus had time for that crowd too, and he deals with them extensively in his word. Christ loves all men. All men need to recognize that they are lost sinners. If Jesus Christ uses that language, you can bet this preacher will. Now, maybe there's other preachers that trot around the world apologizing for the Lord Jesus. I'm not one of them. They don't even like to mention the word sinner, and somehow they got a complex about it. We can't be telling people that they're sinners. Somehow that'll make them feel bad. Sweetheart, if King Jesus said he came to preach repentance to sinners, it's okay for me to stand here and to say the same thing. <clears throat> you did notice I could hop a little bit. That's right. The knees aren't all the way gone. <clears throat> I'm glad Christ is pursuing sinners. I'm glad he came after me. Jesus Christ loves you today. And because he loves you, he'll speak the truth into your life. And he'll tell you, let me just show you something here. Your sin has afflicted you. Your sin has alienated you from my father. Your sin is an insurmountable mountain. You cannot even hope to enter that place I'm preparing until we make you whole. King Jesus is saying, I've got to make you whole. I've got to make you clean. I've got to make you holy. You've got a horrible affliction, much worse than any physical cancer, much worse than COVID-19. You've got a problem that's bigger than any physical ailment you'll ever face. Ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're sin sick today. And your sin has alienated you from God Almighty. You're already dead in trespasses and sins. You are trotting, trying somehow to work your way through this old life. With no peace of God, you, you are in this world without hope. This world does look like a dark place to most people. How do you get up each morning? How do you face tomorrow? The whole world falling apart and nothing laying out there in front of you except an old enemy called death. How do you get up each morning? You got a problem. You got a deep problem down in your heart. And that hopelessness eats at your spirit like a, like a dreaded cancer. There's no life there. There's no hope there. You don't see uh, any, any future. You don't know what life is all about. Let me tell you about a man who came all the way from glory to seek you and to heal you and to forgive you and to save you and bring you out of darkness, make you all together whole and give you eternal life, raise you up out of death and into life. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the great lover of your soul. Oh, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ came to preach repentance to sinners because before you can get well, you got to know you got a problem. Amen. And there was nobody that was the soul winner like Jesus was. He knew how to get right down where a man lived. And he never dodged any issues. And he never tried to make anybody comfortable. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ was the master psychologist. I, I, I don't even like to use that word, but you know we got a lot of that going around these days. But let me tell you something. Jesus knew exactly how to work with every individual. And he didn't hide their sin problem. Now, we have a lot of folks trying to hide the sin problem. They won't deal with the sin problem. And that's the root of the problem. And until you get that right, you're just laboring in vain. And I'm glad I know the one who's got the remedy for the sin problem. Amen. And I'm glad he loved me when I was lost and undone. And I'm glad he loves you today. And I don't know how far your sins took you. You know, some of you have tuned in long enough. Uh, I'm, I'm about to make some of you mad. This is the way it ought to be, though. If I can preach 30 minutes and nobody gets stirred in their spirit, man, I just should have stayed home in bed that morning. I mean, honest to goodness, somebody help me here. 
Uh, when, 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 when did God call us to come to the pulpit and tickle ears and make everybody feel comfortable in their sin while they drifted right on into hell? That's not our job as ministers of the gospel. We've come to preach the word, the whole counsel of God. If King Jesus preached it, I'm going to preach it. And Christ came preaching repentance. And I'm telling you today, my friend, you will never experience the healing power of the Savior to make your spirit altogether whole, lift you out of death and into life, roll back that darkness. You'll never experience it until you let him bring you to a place of repentance. Repentance. That place of repentance is where you finally yield to the workings of the spirit of God in your life. That place of repentance is where you finally come to grips with the fact that God is right and you are wrong. Amen. That place of repentance, and you'll never come there except the goodness of God brings you there. And believe me, he'll bring you there. Listen, when you come to that place of repentance, you're going to have to acknowledge that you've went your own way. You might have to weep over the rebellion of your, your heart, how you've fought against God, how you've rebelled against him. Down in your spirit, you've been at war with God for a long time, some of you. I remember a sad story. I'll just tell it to you. Fifteen years ago, probably. We were out visiting one Thursday, and I had a conversation with a young man who came to our church in our bus ministry years ago. He wasn't attending church then, and he never was converted, and I knew it when I was talking to him. We were trying to bring his children to church now. And just to make a long story short, I stood there that day, and I, I heard that young man spew such venom towards God the bitterness, the anger. And he said, I'll tell you, if he was right here right now, I'd box him. And I told him, I said, you wouldn't come out too well in, in that scenario because his arms are a bit longer than yours and it just ain't going to work out too good. But it broke my heart. I, I prayed for him. I thought, Lord, friend, you've got to let God Bring you to a place of repentance before it's too late. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it probably wasn't six months. I've lost my bearings on the time, but it wasn't terribly long after that 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 young man died in a tragic accident. <clears throat> and when news came to me about his departing, I thought, oh, my Lord. My Lord, no man can box with you. Only the foolish talk like that. Amen. I wonder how many times God's goodness worked with that young man. He certainly knew the gospel for he was taught it right here in this church. And I don't doubt his own parents had taught him. I don't know where he's at even as we speak. I'm not his final judge. Put him in the Lord's hands. But I'm going to tell you, while we have a loving, compassionate Savior who says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, you'll find rest for your souls. Take your yoke upon me. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. You'll find rest for your soul. I have that kind of Savior. And I have a Savior who's calling you to repentance. If you... Resist the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. And you refuse the gracious invitations of the Lord to come to that place of repentance. Then what Jesus prophesied will be true of you. You didn't repent. And you will surely perish. But it's not God's will that any 
should perish, but that all would come to repentance. God is long-suffering towards us, my friend. He cares about you today. In this closing moment with our television audience, I want to say to those of you watching, listening today, it is time that you allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. It is time that you resign from your rebellion. You bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ and you receive his offer of mercy and grace as you turn in your heart from your sin and disobedience and you give your heart to the Savior. The word says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You will do that when you have a truly repentant heart and as you obey the blessed spirit of God. I pray you'll make that decision today. It has been a blessing for us to worship together at this time, and we invite you to come worship with us. CBM is located 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, easily accessible from State Route 2. Take Route 2 to State Route 101 South and turn left onto Maple Avenue. We would love to have you visit. And don't forget, it's your prayers and gifts of love that bring this program into your home each week. Send your gifts of support prayer requests and comments to CBM, Box 247, Castalia, Ohio, 44824. CBM Worship is a production and presentation of Christian Broadcasting Ministries. CBM, proclaiming the Word.